House prices have been falling for four months in a row, according to the Halifax, and Nationwide report the same, with December's drop meaning that growth during 2022 ended up at only 2.8%. So what happens next? The answer depends on four main factors. The first, forced sales. With 1.8 million people due to remortgage this year, and to do so at higher rates, you could end up with a lot of people falling behind with their loans and having their properties repossessed by the banks. But as the Financial Times reported, some of the UK's largest banks have agreed measures with the government to support borrowers, including switching them to interest-only deals. So it's unlikely that we'll see repossessions or anything like the same scale as we did in 2008, for example. The second factor, supply. Demand from buyers has collapsed over the last six months, but what about supply? Well, sellers know that buyers are staying away at the moment, so unless they really need to sell, they're largely staying put. One analysis found that the amount of stock coming to market in 2023 so far is 46% lower than it was in the closing months of 2022. Thirdly, there's the health of the UK economy. The much predicted recession has so far failed to arrive, with GDP surprisingly growing by 0.1% in November. If the economy remains relatively strong, unemployment will stay low, which ties back into forced sales, and people will start to feel better about their job prospects, which supports the property market. And finally, the big one, interest rates, or more accurately, mortgage rates. Inflation seems to be falling, which means the Bank of England might take a less aggressive approach to increasing interest rates. The consensus is for the peak in rates to be just over 4%, which is a big fall from the 4.6% that markets were pricing in in December, and an even bigger fall from the 5.5% that they were pricing in around about October. But fixed mortgage rates are still higher than you'd expect given these figures, although the latest data shows that products of all durations are falling. Okay, so put all these together and where does it leave the future of property prices? Well, our predictions are very different from those of most forecasters, and we've got another video coming out soon explaining our reasoning in full, so make sure you're subscribed for that one. Moving on to rents, and the Financial Times is reporting on what they call a rental crisis in London, with far more demand than supply. I rent in London, and this is definitely true, but I watched the market closely as a result, and I've seen it calm down over the last month or so, but it is still highly competitive. And rents should stay strong across the country, with Zoopla projecting growth of 4-5% to this year. All the forces that led to an explosion in rents last year are still in place. Rental inquiries are 46% above the five-year average, and supply is 38% below the average, and that means only one thing. Interestingly, the undersupply of rental property seems pretty structural. The number of rental properties in the country is virtually unchanged since 2015, despite the population growing, and despite a higher proportion of people overall renting rather than owning. Does this mean that politicians are going out of their way to attract more landlords into the market? Well, it's quite the opposite in Scotland, where investors now need to pay an even higher level of tax on new purchases than owner-occupiers do. In England, the surcharge is 3%. In Scotland, it was 4%, but it's now been increased to 6%. The Scottish government is also considering extending the rent freeze that's currently in place until the end of March. They may renew it for another six months. Here's the thing though, whatever happens across 2023 as a whole, it seems pretty certain that the first quarter of the year will be very negative in terms of sentiment. Recession and inflation fears are still strong, mortgages are still uncertain, and falls in price will probably still be widely reported for the next couple of months at least. But if you're buying for the long term, this is actually good news, because it means you'll see opportunities that just weren't there six months ago and may not be there in another six months. So watch this video next, where I share some specific actions you can take and tools you can use to profit from the market in the months ahead.